Hey, sis, I need to tell you something. What is it? Well, Connor just got brought into the hospital. He did? Are you sure? Why is he at the hospital? He went on a work trip this morning. Did he get into a car accident on his way there or something? Uh, you could say that. What do you mean? Is he okay? What happened? So, he got rushed in with another woman and they both arrived naked. What do you mean, naked? With another woman? I don't understand. They were unconscious when they got here, but they're fully awake now. Tell me exactly what happened. I can't be too sure, but I'm pretty sure he was having an affair. They said that he was getting it on with the other woman in his car somewhere. They got ambushed by the woman's husband who was following them. The enraged husband apparently rammed his car into the car they were in. That's the story so far. So, they got into a car accident while they were trying to get it on? That scumbag! How could he be so disgusting? He has shame, acting like some animal on heat? I know, it's so messed up. And that's the thing with working at an ER. We see all kinds of messed up things, every nasty, screwed up second of it. Anyways, are you okay? I can't believe he'd do something like that. I thought everything was fine with you guys. What nasty things has he been hiding from you? I can't imagine what you must be going through right now. There really is no such thing as a perfect marriage. I should have known when he told me he was going on a work trip. That lying piece of trash? He was probably out there spending that time with that woman. Yeah, I hate to say it, sis. But I knew he would be trouble. He was a little too charming and good-looking for his own good. You were pretty head over heels about him, though. I don't think his looks have anything to do with him acting like such an idiot. I think he might just be born a cheating, lying womanizer. You really can't trust anyone anymore. There really isn't a good man left in this world. Now I need to figure out how I'm going to make him pay for this. Wow, look at you, and here I thought you'd be sobbing and running to him. Well, he made me this way. One nameless woman after another, I've frankly gotten used to his cheating ways. I'm not even all that surprised by this. So, what are you going to do now? I need some time to think. All right, sis. You look after yourself. Let me know if there's anything I can do. All right, thanks for telling me all of this. Don't worry, I'll handle it. Woman, what's wrong with you? Your husband is at the ER. How dare you not come and check up on me? Why would I check up on you? I have no interest in seeing you or your mistress naked. No, did your sister blab about everything? Her and her big mouth. You're just like her, always nagging and talking behind people's backs. The audacity! You're the one who was trying to get it on with your mistress in the car, having to be rushed into ER naked? You should have some shame. Don't you have anything to say to me? Say what? Your blabbermouth sister already told you everything. If you're looking for an apology, forget it. Yeah, I had an affair, so what? It's just a fling. It doesn't mean anything. I just met up with that woman because she was around the area. It was her crazy husband that made everything a big mess, slamming into the car like a maniac. He made a fool out of himself and embarrassed everyone in the process. I swear, I'll sue him. I'll make him pay for what he did. You were having an affair with his wife, and you want to sue him? You want to make him pay? You're the one who should be paying for what you've done. How on earth are you so self-absorbed? You would be lucky he doesn't come at you with everything he's got. And like I was telling you, it was just a one-time thing. I don't even ever want to see her again. It's just life. I didn't do anything wrong. I mean, it's really her husband's fault for not being able to satisfy her in the first place. If he was such a great guy, why would she even have an affair with me? He completely blew things out of proportion. I can't believe he made me come to the ER naked. What a drama queen. I'm the real victim here. He should really watch out for what he's got coming for him. You sound like a 
totally self-centered psycho. You're completely insane. That reminds me. I think the accident messed up that woman pretty bad. She's been talking gibberish. I think the concussion might have done something to her head. Oh well, more reason to never see her again. <laughs> Let's just forget about everything that happened today, okay? Let's just go back to how things were. Your narcissism is mind-blowing. You should know that you're not in such a good shape yourself. You're on a total bed rest and you call your mistress useless? Did you ever think about anyone else besides yourself? My injury is temporary. I'll bounce back in no time. It might take a minute for me to get back to my old self, but all this is temporary nevertheless. With a little rehabilitation therapy, I'm all good, baby. You can thank my naturally athletic body for that. Um, what? You think you'll be fine after a little rehabilitation? Yeah, that's what the doctor told me. He also told me to stay positive. I think that's to help me recover faster or whatever. Wow, such a great doctor. Telling a lying cheater to stay positive. Well, I get it though. Because saying you're completely paralyzed from the waist down and will never be able to stand or walk would be something that might be a little too real to tell his narcissistic patient. You need to come to terms with what's going on. What in the... What are you talking about? Have you lost your mind? I know you're kind of mad, but you shouldn't make stuff up like that. That's mean. I'm not making anything up. It's facts. Your doctor told me himself. No way. He hasn't said anything like that to me. The hospital called. They wanted to talk to his wife, so I went and had a little chat with your doctor. You were at the hospital? And you didn't come to see how I was? I didn't have it in me to face my husband who got injured while doing the dirty with his mistress. Is that so hard to believe? What? Wait, so I'm really paralyzed from the waist down? I can't walk anymore? I thought this was just temporary. If you're joking, this isn't funny. Stop this nonsense right now. You're just angry at stuff, so you're lying to make me feel bad. I don't need you to believe me, but tell me this. Can you move your legs right now? I didn't think so. You should at least have some idea. You're super in touch with your own body, after all. Nah, this is all just temporary. All right, whatever helps you sleep at night. Because you'll do anything to make yourself feel better, right? Nothing bad can happen to you because you're just so important. It's like you don't even like me anymore. I'm your husband. Think of the last 10 years we shared. Why aren't you acting like yourself? You need to stop lying and pretending that you don't care about me. I know you're just devastated right now. Your husband is paralyzed from the waist down. Be the good wife you've always been and get me some help. Yeah, no. I really have no sympathy for you. I stopped being your loving wife a long time ago. There is no way anyone could care for a man who only ever cares about himself. Always out there looking for the next broad that would give him the time of day. I am numb from all that you've put me through. I've had enough. Who are you? Am I even talking to my wife right now? Since when have you become so ruthless? A real woman should care for her man. You're mine and I need you. I'm only a real woman to a loving and faithful man. You are neither of those things. Don't you dare claim me as your woman. I know all your antics. It's not gonna work. I can't believe this. That's cold. I'm on bed rest, unable to move a muscle. I know you're angry about the stuff that's happened, but do you really have to be that evil? Do you know what my life is gonna be like now? Living as a paraplegic? As a disabled person? I'll never be able to stand up or even walk by myself. How on earth am I supposed to live like this? You're disabled, not dead. I'm sure you'll be fine. You still seem to have that big mouth of yours. I didn't mean it like that. Come on. How am I supposed to do anything now? This is just so humiliating. Everyone is going to give me weird looks. I can't live like that. Why not? I don't see this as being all that bad. What? Remember all the times you cheated on me? Whenever you got caught, you had the excuse of saying that it's just how it is. That you couldn't help it, because that's just what men do. 
telling me over and over that what's in your pants had a mind of its own, and somehow you sleeping with all those women wasn't your fault. Consider it problem solved. That thing of yours won't be giving you any more troubles now. No more flings, no more marriages for you to ruin. I see that as a win for humanity. Stop making stupid jokes. Now's really not the time. Are you really the woman that I've spent the last 10 years with? I just found out that I'll be paralyzed for the rest of my life, and you're saying that this is a win? Do you know how much I just want to end it all right now? How miserable I am? Tell it to someone that cares. It's karma, sweetheart. You reap what you sow. All of your actions leading up to now finally caught up with you. I don't see why I should care about your feelings at all. You certainly didn't care. Not about me or our children, only yourself and whoever your next conquest was. Have you ever even thought about the suffering you caused? How many times I considered just ending everything? That's not what I intended. I feel like you're just being petty. You should get over it. I know I did. The past is the past. My concern right now is that I'm freaking paralyzed. I don't care about karma or whatever you want to believe in. I don't care. I didn't ask for this. You better come to your senses quick. I need my wife right now. Mm, no. I don't think I have it in me to look after you for the rest of my life. Sorry. I know better than to devote my life to a man who just isn't capable of thinking about anyone else but himself. So what are you going to do now? I doubt that you'll be going back to your job in that state that you're in. How are you even going to make a living, let alone even do basic things? Or are you more worried about the situation in your pants? What do you mean by that? I'm talking about your diapers, sweetheart. You'll now be wearing one for the rest of your life, and I doubt that you'll be able to change it yourself. I wonder whose job that's going to be. I mean, you could probably ask your parents. I wonder what they'll think about that. Or maybe you should call one of your girlfriends. See who might be up for the job. I know that it might be a little humiliating at first, but who knows? Someone out there might love you enough to volunteer. Time's ticking. You better get started on making those calls. There's a real woman that you always wanted out there. I believe in you. Stop, please. I get it. You're upset with me right now. But please, I feel like I've suffered enough. I paid the price for all the stupid things I did to you. Can't you see? Do you really have to be so cruel to me right now? I suffered for over 10 years. The betrayal, neglect, the heartbreak. And you want me to have pity? If it weren't for the kids, I would have left you a long time ago. Our twins needed their father, no matter how pathetic he is. That was the only thing that kept me going. Through all the years of pain. As much as I was dying inside, I did it for them. Yes, just think about our kids. Our little four-year-old twins. They need me. They need their father in their lives. They would have no one to look up to if I was gone. Who will be there for them for their parent-teacher meetings, the plays, or whatever they do nowadays? I'm so glad that you finally came to your senses, honey. Let's do this together, like we always used to. Our sons are five years old, not four. You would know if you knew when their birthday was, which you clearly don't, because you'd never bother to show up at anything. And what, did you really say whatever they do nowadays? Do you even listen to yourself talk? You have never been there for our twins, always with the promises, yet never keeping a single one. Don't you dare pretend that you've been anything close to a father to our sons. When was the last time you even had a meal with them? Admit it, they've never been a priority to you. You were always out doing whatever felt good to you. I really should have left you a long time ago. Can't believe that I let this happen. To me, to our sons. You're a terrible husband and father. I want a divorce. Absolutely not. Look, I'll do whatever you want me to do, please. I can't live without you. I won't divorce you. I have all the means to file for a divorce, and it'll not be favorable for you. All your nasty text messages, the photos... What? You really thought you were being let off the hook all these years? I know you left an entire history of your dirty deeds on your phone. All your disgusting affairs with so many women. 
have more than enough information to take you to court and get everything that I want from you. The years I've spent having to go through all of that? You have no idea the strength it took for me to even exist in the same space as you. Just like a fool, I'd hope that one day you'd realize what horrible mistake you were making. That maybe I'd be able to forgive you. For the sake of our kids, somehow we might be able to make it work. But as they say, a leopard doesn't change its spots, and I was prepared for the worst. I really did wish that things could have worked out at some point, but I guess none of that matters now. What are you saying? You're such a despicable woman. How could you say something like that? Here I am, learning that I'll be a paraplegic for the rest of my life, and you were doing what? Going through the dirt you have on me? I can't believe you'd plan something like that. You are pure evil. Yep. Sorry. It is what it is, right, honey? You're sick. I can't tell you how much I'm enjoying this. Knowing that all those years of pain you caused have eventually come back to bite you. I don't believe this. You are out of your mind. This is not happening to me. You were preparing for this all this time? Yep. Consider this your punishment. I'm going through with the divorce whether you like it or not. You have no say in my decision. Save your whining for the court. Oh, and by the way, you better be prepared to pay for everything. Why are you doing this? Do you not have an ounce of sympathy? I'm paraplegic. I won't be able to work or live alone. How am I going to feed myself or get a job? Please, you're being unreasonable right now. Don't you at least feel a little sorry for me? Nope, not sorry at all. Like I said, it's karma. You reap what you sow. Oh, and speaking about money, I know you can pay for everything. You've been at the same company for the last 15 years. You can use the half of your severance to pay for whatever I'm asking. And the other half is alimony and child support. But how will I live? In case you didn't know, I have kids to feed and don't have time to think about you. Not that you'd know this. It's what a responsible parent does, putting their children first. I'm packing your stuff and sending it to your parents. As soon as you get discharged from the hospital, I'll be serving you the divorce papers. So you better get well soon, sweetheart. Once that's done, I never want to see you again. Whether you live out on the streets or move back in with your parents, I don't care. Just get out of my life. That's everything I wanted to say. This conversation is over. Don't contact me unless it's about the divorce. After that, I received the alimony and some portion of the child support from my ex-husband. Since he couldn't go back to his old job or get a new one, his parents agreed to pay the child support on his behalf. His parents also gave me a sincere apology. They were incredibly embarrassed and ashamed about how things unfolded and promised me that they'll do everything they can to help me give our twins the best life possible. Although it might be foolish for me to say this, but I really do hope my ex-husband learns from all of this that one day he'll realize how much pain and suffering he's caused others, to be able to feel remorse for his actions. Then maybe he'll finally start being a father to our sons. Hey Lisa, you got a little time? Oh, hello Mary. Sorry. I'm actually at work now, not really supposed to be using my phone. I'll send you a line later on during my break. Oh yeah? Even if it's about your husband, George? Huh? George? What's George got to do with you? If you don't hear me out now, you may regret it later on. What are you talking about? I'll be straight with you, Lisa. George and I are getting married. There, I said it. Wait, what? What are you even saying? Is this a joke? George is my husband. He can't marry you. That makes no sense. Yeah, but once you divorce him, it starts to make perfect sense. It's not as simple as that. Just hold on a second. I'm going to take the afternoon off and confirm this with George. Oh yeah? Can you even confirm it? Yeah, he's at home today, working remotely. Once I get home, we'll clear the whole thing up. It's all a big mistake. Or some sort of prank you're pulling. Yeah, but maybe it would be better for you if you didn't do that. Why do you say that? 
Uh, I don't know how to tell you this, but I'm at your place. Or should I say bed now with George? Not sure you want to witness that. Excuse me? Kinda naughty, don't you think? Making love with my younger sister's husband in their own bed. <laughs> I can't get enough of it. This guilty pleasure. It's intoxicating. I just got a line message from George. So, it's all true, huh? This is not a joke. Just as I said, right? He even said I'm way more attractive than you. True that. <laughs> he says he prefers older women. Who would have thought, huh? <laughs> so, it's decided. George is mine. End of story. That means you have no reason to come home. You're not wanted here. What about you? As I recall, you're married too. That's all taken care of. I was worried I wouldn't be able to pay him off, but... Good old George saved the day and settled that no problem. The divorce went through without issues just this morning. Good riddance to that guy. George paid it off. Huh. I'm surprised. When you got money, you got money. George is loaded. Do as you like, Mary. Hope you don't have any regrets. Oh yeah? I'm surprised you gave up so easily. I was expecting a bigger fight. I'll send the divorce papers over to mom and dad's place. Sign it and submit it at City Hall as soon as you can. You got that? Hey Lisa, what's up? Has it already been six months? Time flies. Uh, is that you, sis? What the hell do you want? You got a real nerve contacting me after what you pulled. Yeah, yeah. I knew you would be this way. I kinda understand how you feel, actually. I was just texting you to tell you something very important. Is this about you guys finally getting married? You already heard? You must be clairvoyant. Kinda obvious. Why else would you contact me? Just want to rub it in my face. I saw it coming a mile away. Aw, oh, shucks. I was going to gloat all about how happy I am. Here you squirm. <laughs> this is no fun. Everything you say is no fun. I have no interest in what you have to say. I always hated your smugness. Really pisses me off to this day. No wonder George picked me over you. <laughs> Like you said, he prefers older, more wise, and experienced women. What's that supposed to mean? You saying I'm an old lady? All said and done? That just sounds like loser talk. Just oozing with envy. Think what you like, Mary. I'm over it. Oh yeah? Well, if you hear what I have to say now, those feelings will come bubbling up again. I'm sure of it. What now? We're headed to Europe for our honeymoon. To Europe? Seriously? Yup, we're hitting the top spots. London, Paris, and Milan. I always wanted to see Italy. Can't wait. And here's the icing on the cake. We're having a little intimate wedding in Paris. Can't you believe it? George plans on spending upwards of 30,000 bucks on the whole thing. I feel like a celeb. You're not serious. Where'd he get that kind of money? He's got money. That's another reason I married him. This is way beyond belief. I knew I would see those envy bubbles come burbling up. Uh, it's not really envy. More like astonishment. Astonished, envy, jealousy. It's all the same to you. You were always so mundane. Boring little relative only wedding at a local church. You had, like, two of your best friends from high school attend, and that was it. What a total joke. You guys didn't even go on a honeymoon, did you? <laughs> what a huge difference. Never thought such a disparity would show up now. The way he loves and cares for me. It's like night and day. Well, that was then. You can take it however you like. But I can tell you this. You shouldn't be so extravagant. It might come back and bite you in the you-know-what. Huh? Extravagant? What are you talking about? That word does not exist in George's vocabulary. 
I mean, think of the debt he accumulated. The compensation to me, not to mention to your ex-husband. Not really nickels and dimes. The total amounts to over $100,000, right? And George paid this himself? He paid all that and now another $30,000 for a honeymoon and wedding in Paris? It just doesn't add up. I was aware of his financial situation. He was left broke after we divorced. You can understand my alarm. There you go again. The green-eyed monster rears its ugly head. I thought you weren't jealous. I'm just warning you. Seems a little self-destructive is all. Just saying. Like I said before, George is loaded. He has no money worries. I thought you knew all about this. He was your husband after all. No, I never knew he had so much money to be honest. What's $100,000 much less 30000 That's just chump change to him. <laughs> I wish you would just admit defeat and froth of the mouth with envy. That would make my day. <laughs> okay, I tried warning you. If you're so set on having the upper hand, have it your way. Yeah, I do have the upper hand. <laughs> you giving up so easily kind of makes me feel sorry for you. Think what you like. Like I said, I warned you out of concern, not envy. Just so you're aware. I've already cut all ties with you. I don't think of you as my family after what you pulled. So I really don't care what happens to you. Don't come crying to me later. I'm fine with that. That means you will no longer have any feelings for my George. That's exactly what I wanted. Hey Lisa, you there? Guess where we are. Yep, that's right. We're in Paris. We just exchanged vows in a beautiful cathedral. It's so beautiful. Oh yeah, I didn't even know you were gone. So, what do you want? Bet you're pretty envious right about now. No, not really. Actually, I'm feeling empathy and a touch of pity towards what's coming. Are you still harping on about that? I told you George is swimming in cash. We have no worries ahead. Full steam ahead, I say. I'm even confident in saying we're set for life. I mean, how else could he plop $30,000 down just like that? You tell me. Set for life? Really? Without any income? That makes no sense. Pardon me? What do you mean, no income? You're saying he never told you? George has been unemployed for quite some time now. Wait, what? Unemployed? Yeah, that's right. Jobless, out of a job, without gainful employment. Even if he did gain unemployment after divorcing me, I'm pretty sure his bank account is at zero after all the compensation he paid. There's no way he could get his hands on $30,000 just like that. Wait, back up a bit. What's this about him being jobless? What's going on here? Are you serious? He never told you? What the hell are you talking about? Tell me for God's sakes. He got fired from his job after they found out he was having an affair with you. Pardon me? You can't be serious. You can't get fired for infidelity. That's unfair dismissal. They deserve to get sued for this. Come on, Mary. You don't seem to understand. You said it yourself. Me? What did I say? George was at home doing remote work. When you guys were making love, right? Working remote means he's on company business hours. Having an affair with a married woman on company time? Sounds like a good reason for dismissal to me. Yeah, but... The company has ways to check whether an employee is working or not. With widespread use of remote work recently, it's kind of hard to be inactive without them knowing. And it wasn't just a one-time thing either. It evidently affected his work performance. They had all the evidence, so he got fired. I warned you about this. And I don't really think he got any kind of surveillance package or meaningful retirement bonus. But I'm really curious about that $30,000 for this honeymoon you're on. How did he manage that? 
So does that mean... He wasn't working at home, doing remote work, all this time? Yeah, like I said, no gainful employment. Yeah, pretty sure. No, this is some kind of sick joke. What I can't understand is why he even thought he was rich. He's just a normal office worker, not some elite businessman. Huh? Just an office worker? Of course the company he worked for was a major corporation, and his pay was a bit more than average, but... Basically, he was just a salaried worker. So, when you said he plopped down 30,000 bucks just like that, I was like, what? No way he could afford that. Hold on a sec. You say he's a salaried worker? I heard he was an executive, that he was making a six-figure salary. Pardon me? I saw his name on the company's homepage. Oh, that? I think you mistook him for someone else. What are you talking about mistook him for someone else? Yeah, the vice president has the same last name as George. That's probably who you saw. You're lying. I mean, come on, Mary. Think about it. George isn't even 30 yet. How could he be an executive at a major corporation? It doesn't make any sense. He wasn't even a star employee or a top salesman or anything. Just your run-of-the-mill pen pusher. Didn't you even think it was odd? This is not happening. Then why did I even steal him away from you? For what purpose? What am I going to do now? I've been totally conned. I don't want him anymore. You can have him back, Lisa. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> I better get back to work. Wait a sec. You can't leave me hanging. Goodbye. Have fun in Paris. I later heard that the honeymoon ended right then and there. They cut it short and came back stateside, but they weren't able to get a refund for that extravagant trip. I was later informed that George told my sister that he had gotten fired. As you can imagine, Mary and George got into a fierce argument, her accusing him of tricking her into marrying him. They eventually ended up filing for divorce. That $30,000 you ask? George borrowed that money from his sister. He convinced her that he wanted to take his new wife on a once-in-a-lifetime trip to Europe. His sister apparently signed some loan application as the grantor for some disreputable moneylender without properly reading the agreement. Last I heard, he was saddled with two or three part-time jobs just to pay off his debts. I just can't understand people. Why can't they manage their money properly? Don't they see the consequences? Anyway, as long as they don't interfere with my life going forward, I'm fine with that.